Hey guys, and uh, this is Rich coming back to you with some more information about the Rock 64. So if you looked at my prior video, you know I'm a fan of Diet Pine. Actually, I gotta tweet them and send them a link to the video to show them the issue. Um, I've got it running. I haven't tested it out. Other than a smoke test and loading the OS, I have not done any functional test. All right, but what I'm about to do is I'm probably gonna drop some heat sinks on the, the CPU, and I guess that's memory. Um, because I'm looking to put it in a case because I don't want the thing to get banged up. And in the future, I'm probably going to get the... Uh, where, where does it go? It goes... Oh, right here, the EMMC. Because boot. this is real fast, and booting from an EMC, EMMC is going to be even nicer. So next question is... This is a Pi 3, so when we do a, like, a comparison on the physical attributes here, uh, the power connector, that guy right there, is different. So you're going to have to, you know, if you get a Pi 3 case for this, you're going to have to do a little bit of editing, uh, physical editing, that is, on the case to get it to fit. Uh, the back ends fit, except for this IR port here. You're going to have to, you know, drill a hole in the case for that to make it fit. Uh, pretty much everything else is good. I'm going to show you in a super tight case. All right, so here's another idea. This has one gig Ethernet port. If you wanted to do some sort of routing or firewall, you could add another gig Ethernet port. I haven't plugged it in to test it. I'm just telling you it may work, and I'll have to make an annotation on the end there. The other good thing about this device, and I'll put a link for it on Amazon, is it's USB 3 and it's a USB 3 hub. So if you want to plug more than one USB external drive in, you can do that uh, and get another gig Ethernet port. There's also, hey, this is a favorite of mine, Amazon Basics gig Ethernet works on a Mac, works on other devices. So uh, I will definitely have to test these out and throw them in the annotation to let you know if they work or not. All right, so back to the case. So this is a Pi 3 case, and it pretty much drops in. So, all right, right here, you're going to have to either, you know, with a drill bit or a knife or something like that, open that up. The audio port, the HDMI port are pretty good. Uh, these ports all work. Let me just drop the top of the case on. So this is a tight case, a a case that's a little uh, more relaxed would probably be better. All right, and the, this is, let me get this placed in correctly. Huh. So that, that was half a joke, get it placed in correctly. All right, so uh, definite perfect fit on the uh, Cat5 port. The double stack, USB 2.0 is a good fit, USB 3.0, however you can say that's a good fit or not, because it's only one, you have that gap there. So right here, this is looking good, but you're going to have to open up for the power. The back cover on this won't fit unless I drill out a hole for here. Now this is a super tight case, and definitely if you're putting it in a case like this, make sure you throw some heat sinks on it. I would even go as far as drilling a couple of holes in the, the top here to let some air through. Um, I may end up using uh, this metal case that Tom, the Linux guy, one of my patrons, gave me. And he gave me two Raspberry Pi 3s also, which super, super nice, which uh, probably I am going to end up donating them to somebody that listens to the mini PC show in the future. Um, cause while, while I have a use for them, I'll use them. Second, I don't have a use for them. I'm going to donate them away. And so I got a little bit of homework to do as far as annotating stuff, but I will get that information out to you, let you know how these things work. Currently that's the Wi-Fi antenna I'm using on the Rock 64 and, uh, stuff is heat sensitive. So Decent heat sink is a good idea, and definitely some sort of case ventilation is a good idea. Uh, I am going to say, all right, let me see if I can do this off the top of my head. So to my patrons, Andy Meows, John Hollinger, Umar Sear, Matt Champ, 
uh, Tom Token Linux guy. And last but not least, Ian Fox from Canada, who I'm actually pretty close to right now. Not, not that he and I are close, just geographically. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, go to flyingrich.com, and that's flyingrich.com. So you can see the podcast that I'm on, the my Patreon link, and uh, anything else that's out there. Thank you so much, guys. Later.